Not exactly a slow news day, folks. New York Attorney General Letitia James has called out Donald Trump and Trump's surety for posting an inadequate bond in the New York Attorney General civil fraud case. Justice in Goron has now set a hearing in a few weeks to determine the adequacy of the bond by Knight Specialty Insurance Company, which doesn't seem to have adequate reserves to be a surety in the state of New York. But Knight Insurance Company says, ha ha ha, we don't have to because we're not licensed in New York. That doesn't make any sense to me, and I'll break down why. Also, New York Attorney General Letitia James filed a letter brief with Justice Ngoron urging him to amend the independent monitorship order of the retired federal judge Barbara Jones to give it more teeth and enhance the powers of the independent monitor, including requiring the independent monitor to do a full-scale investigation into the Trump organization for what it knew and when it knew it about Alan Weisselberg's perjury conviction and his provision of false information during the court proceedings. Judge Eileen Cannon, meanwhile, in the Southern District of Florida, denied Donald Trump's motion to dismiss um, where Donald Trump was asserting that under the Presidential Records Act, he was permitted to take our nuclear codes and take our national defense information and war plans, put it in boxes, ship it to Mar-a-Lago, and therefore declare it his own personal property. Judge McAfee in Georgia denied Donald Trump's motion to dismiss where Trump claimed under the First Amendment he can say or do whatever he wanted to overthrow the results of a free and fair election. Meanwhile, the early investors... Two of them, the Schwarzmans, uh, who invested in Trump Media, or rather the digital world acquisition company Companion SPAC, they've pled guilty to insider trading. Um, they've made about $22 million. The stock continued to tumble today uh, down by another uh, significant drop. No label says they're not going to be running any presidential candidate. I interviewed, of all people, Donald Trump's former former national security advisor, Josh Bolton, and never John Bolton never thought that that was ever going to uh, happen. Also, Justice Juan Mershon denied Donald Trump's claim of absolute presidential immunity in the Manhattan District Attorney criminal case set for trial on April 15th on the basis of untimeliness. In other words, Trump, you filed this 17 days before trial. Get the heck out of here. While all of that's going on, Donald Trump was hanging out with conspiracy theorist Laura Loomer at Mar-a-Lago and using information, or I should just say lies, that she's posting about Justice Mershon's daughter. Trump was taking her reporting, praising her while she was at the house, saying, you don't want to be loomered everybody. And those posts seem to be violations of the uh, gag order that had to include the judge's family and the family members of the Manhattan District Attorney's staff. Trump still repeatedly making posts, but using like Laura Loomer's articles while she's at the House as his own way to try to get around it. We've got that and so much more as well. Uh, this is the Midas Touch podcast. Brett and Jordy, how are you? Doing great. To, I mean, today feels like a great day for pro-democracy. I mean, wow, a lot of uh, really brutal losses for Donald Trump, quite frankly, <laughs> with some wrinkles in there. And, and we will certainly get to it all and give you the full picture and the full context of all the decisions that have come in today, all the information that has come today, and also really positive news for President Biden, a lot of really good news and good indicators for the pro-democracy movement. Man, I know we have so much to discuss today. And plus, Against All Enemies, everybody, our movie, I want to give it a, a quick shout out, everybody, right at the top and thank everybody because Against All Enemies, our documentary, is now number five of all documentaries on Apple TV. Number five of all. And that's available once Let's again go. to anybody. This is different than the Apple TV Plus. There's no subscription involved. You rent it or buy it. And it's now also on Amazon or YouTube. Congrats to the team behind Against All Enemies. And thank you so much for your support and for all your kind words. 
Jordy, what's new in your end, man? Shout out to the Mightiest Mighty, man. I threw the I threw the challenge at them. I think we were at 12 or 13 when we had the episode last week. Maybe we were even at 15. And I said, Mightiest Mighty, can we crack the top 10? And you know what the Mighty told me? They said, not only can we crack the top 10, we're going to crack the top five. Let's go. Let's keep going. If you have not ordered the documentary yet, if you have not watched it, go for it right now. The links are in the description of this episode. Click it right after this episode and, and check it out. It's phenomenal. I can't wait for this episode. Brett, you shaved, man. I, you were going strong with that beard. Ben, you, you haven't shaved yet, but but I but I did shave. So two two, uh, two weeks of progress gone, Jordy. Two weeks of progress, weeks of progress gone. gone. Had to break out the Henson, you know. Uh, had to be good looking for people. You know? <laughs> I got a haircut. I'm ready because I'm 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 ready to go. I'm amped up. I'm psyched. You know. Big big show today. I mean, look, let's take a look at just what Donald Trump is posting. I'll go into all of the court violations, in my opinion, in a, in a moment. But like, just take a look at this. I'm not going to play you the song because it's just utterly abhorrent. But, you know, Donald Trump posting on his social media, January 6th hostages with President Donald J. Trump. It's one of the creepiest songs that's out there. It is a distorted version of the national anthem that he sings with January 6th insurrectionists, some of the most dangerous of the rioters, including a rioter that bludgeoned Officer Sicknick. Um, and when you go through you know, the people that are in that D.C. jail who Donald Trump calls to free. Like here's the other post by Donald Trump, the 600th day of their nightly vigil outside the D.C. jail from Mickey Whithoft, Ashley Babbitt's mother. This is what Donald Trump's posting on a daily basis on his social media platform, in addition to attacking the uh, justice's daughter the same way he attacked the other justice's wife and law clerk. But here he's posting, stand in solidarity with our January 6th political prisoners in the D.C. jail as we honor their bravery. Honoring the J6 rioters in the D.C. jail with hashtags Freedom Corners. I want to give a shout out to JustSecurity.org that did a great breakdown of the people who are in the D.C. Uh, jail right now. 27 of them that Trump is referring to, who he's singing songs with, violently assaulted police officers. 19 have been convicted at trial or pled guilty. Eight more have been charged. And when you just read the individual stories about people who uh, viciously ripped off the masks of MPD officers or tried to throw explosive devices at police officers, and then you reflect on the fact that Donald Trump started his campaign on the 30th anniversary of the Waco siege, as they refer to it as, um, and Trump did it in Waco, leading with that J6 song where he starts off and replaces the national anthem and praises who he calls the hostages. As I've said before, one of the moments, right, from the debate in 2020 that everybody remembers is when Trump was like, proud boys, stand back and stand by. And everyone's like, whoa. Okay, right now, Donald Trump is calling these people brave and courageous. He's singing musicals with them, and he's replaced our national anthem and has the people at his events pledge their allegiance to the J6ers, and he starts posting about it. Then you talk about what Donald Trump is doing when he goes to a place like Grand Rapids, Michigan, and he just does what Donald Trump does. He lies and says he met with the family of Ruby Garcia, an incredible person, 25-year-old woman who was uh, killed by an acquaintance of hers, who her sister Mavi Garcia said was not a boyfriend. The police say it could have been a, a boyfriend, but someone who was here uh, illegally from Mexico and Donald Trump trying to use the murder of Ruby Garcia plagiarizing from her eulogy in his speech. And then the family of Ruby Garcia is like, can you stop? We never met you. You're lying about that. Stop using us as a political prop. Stop taking our family's tragedy and turning it into some political campaign to go after people who are here from other countries, even if they're here unlawfully. They say, look, yeah, 
that the murderer should never have been here. But they said there are Americans who are murderers. Stop using us for your xenophobic agenda, right? In that same speech in Michigan, and then Donald Trump to, went to Wisconsin. He was saying things like, suburban women love me. I protect you. You know, I'm your protector, suburban woman. Don't you love me? And, and here's the thing. When I think people, I'll get your take, Brett and Drew, when people see this guy, right, now that there's a campaign actually taking place, I like when people, like, you know, when all the media tried to, like, focus on the horse race. Like, when a horse race starts, it's like, and we're off. And, and what the media would do is, and we're Okay, what's happening right away? You have to let the race develop. It's called a campaign for a reason. And now when people are seeing a binary choice or choices in general, they're saying, whoa, exactly what we said was going to happen on the Midas Touch Network. Go, people are going to see he's praising the insurrectionists. They're going to see he says things like, you know, I'd rather be electrocuted than eaten by sharks. <laughs> you know who's great? Vladimir Putin and my buddy Kim Jong-un. I got great relationships with them. I call President Xi my king. King. I call him king. I go, people are going to see that stuff and they're going to be like, what the heck, media? Why were you acting like this was some normal crap for all? This isn't normal. What is going on here? And that's what's happening right now. We're seeing it in the polls, although I don't like to dwell and talk about polls. I want to pretend that the polls aren't the polls anyway, even though President Biden's moving ahead in mostly all of them right now. I don't want to think like that, but I think that's what's happening. It's almost like, Ben, and to go back to your race analogy, it's as if there were a, a race in the Olympics, a, a running race, and the race had not yet started, and you had one individual participating in the race who was just running in circles, wearing themselves out, doing weird flips and, and screaming, and then you had one person <laughs> stretching, you know, getting ready to go, drinking some water, you know, getting some electrolytes, getting, you know, getting their pump on, you know, and you have the announcers going, Oh wow. Look at him. He's really running fast. Look at him in the lead. And you're like, but the, the race hasn't really begun yet. All he's doing is kind of tiring himself out. And then the race begins. And sure enough, you start to see the shifts mm -hmm. and you start to see the person who has actually been kind of resting up, stretching, getting ready for the race and actually using a strategy. You start to see them succeeding uh, where the other person is now failing. And, you know, w when you think about, Ben, all these various uh, comments that Donald Trump is making on the campaign trail, and it, it feels like, a, in many ways, a redux to me of 2020. All the bad things that Donald Trump said, which are most, which is most of what Donald Trump says, he is just repeating again, but he's doubling down in a way that's even more dangerous with even more kind of violence behind his words with even more kind of just, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, kind of just like Nazi rhetoric, the way he speaks mm -hmm. about immigrants who have done such great things for our country. He calls them animals during his speeches. He speaks about these mass deep Deportations, just truly despicable stuff on another level. Combine that with his praise of the January 6th insurrection and his allegiance to these uh, these January 6ers who are in jail for, like this Ben was going over, for attacking police officers, the most violent of the January 6th insurrectionists. I think when, as people see this stuff, as people hear this bizarre new version of the national anthem he does as they see him salute to footage of the January 6th attack. I think people are kind of like, holy crap, like this person is, is really unhinged. That's not who we want in a president. This is not what America is all about at all. And I think he's just looped into this entire kind of, uh, you know, right wing fever dream with his base. Like it's almost like he's stuck in his own MAGA algorithm where I sure. guess he thinks this is helpful and normal for him when you see him palling around and, and, and uplifting people like Laura Loomer and hanging out still with people like Carrie Lake and Roseanne spouting QAnon nonsense at Mar-a-Lago. And the whole thing is just, so incredibly weird 
And I think he just continues to shrink his base of support as you have President Biden running a campaign that is based on data, that is based on actually spending money in effective ways at targeting voters down to the zip code of where they live, of where you need to get votes out in order to win an election. You see the RNC under Lara Trump. I know, Jordy, you could say it. Go, Lara, go, right? Go, Lara, go. And you see Lara Trump like shuddering these offices, of uh, these RNC offices around the country. And you see Democrats opening up all these offices around the country in all these important swing states, really doing the work of getting out votes and not running just an, a campaign that's about being extremely online, but running mm -hmm. a campaign that's about being on the ground, knocking on doors, you know, mailers, flyers, speaking to voters, connecting with people outside what of your crazy echo thought. chamber. It, I, I, you have just such smart like technicians, you know, on uh, tacticians on one side, and then you have people who are just seem to have zero strategy other than let's placate the most extreme people in the country, this extremist MAGA base, I don't think it's going to end well for them. Jordy, what say you? I couldn't agree more. Well said, B. It, it, it's like, you know, you're you're playing somebody in, in chess, right? And they're supposed to be this prodigy or they're just supposed to be good at the game. And all of a sudden, you know, they make their move and the move, it's not a move forward. They take the piece and they shove it up their nose. And then the media goes, oh, that might play well for them. Let, let, let's see how that plays with what. And people are just truly sick of being so gaslit by legacy media, man, where it's just like, we want to be armed with the data and the facts. And we, the voters, the, the citizens of this country will then be able to make an informed decision about who they want to lead us. It's not even a question about who's doing a better job right now. I haven't even seen Trump on the campaign trail. It's like he, he was campaigning for the years that there was no election year. And now they're all out of money because, quite frankly, well, they all are out of money because they're taking the money that the RNC has. And they're taking the money that, that Republicans are donating to Trump and spending it on his legal fees. And the Republican Party and Republicans are just OK with this because now they kind of have to be because they back themselves into a corner and they're like, that's my guy. Well, congratulations. That's your guy. Keep going with him. Go, Lara, go. Shout out Jamie Harrison. That's the funniest phrase of 2024, man. Go, Lara, go. And they're just going to continue to implode time and time again while the Democrats are able to dig their heels and bread and be those tacticians that you're saying. Absolutely. Look, it's 2020 on steroids for Donald Trump, and those steroids are sure shrinking his balls uh, a ton because it is a shriveled. <laughs> what? What? It is, isn't, that, isn't that what steroids is? Isn't steroids shrink balls sometimes? Yeah, I'm just trying yeah, to figure out how, how, how this is going to tie in. But continue. Shriv a very shriveled and weak. Donald Trump. I mean, you gotta let, let me let me. Uh, Are the balls a say, metaphor for something? Uh, I'm just <laughs> shrinking ball, like he's weaker. Anyway, okay, yeah, I got you. All right, all right okay. yeah. steroids, shrinking balls. Okay, in the Trump pump, shouts in the pump. out <laughs> Laurel. <laughs> so <laughs> Donald Trump was having guests over, like Carrie Lake, Laura Loomer. Um, you had Alina Habba, like, like uh, Alina Habba's like in her own little fantasy world, like partying it up. She just got back from St. Bart's where she was making, um, <laughs> and it, and she was like, she's like living the high life losing. It's unbelievable. She's never seen they, this much yeah, but money. Ben, but then they celebrate losers in this party. Like it, it is so on brand. Of course she's partying because she's losing. That's what the MAGA Republicans do. They celebrate losers and she's yeah, the she biggest is. one of them all. Yeah, I mean, $464 million verdict against Donald Trump with post-judgment interest in the New York Attorney General civil fraud case that exceeds $500 million. Trump isn't evil, even able to post like an authentic bond there that's now being challenged. More on that in a bit. She represented him in the E. Jean Carroll case where Trump was found liable for sexual assault with an $83.3 million judgment. And Alina Hobb is out partying in St. Bart's. I mean, look, she's been paid almost $5 million from Trump's political action committees. And she's out there living the high life with five-star villas in St. Bart's. She made individualized bathrobes for her friends individualized Dior bags with all of these goodies, you know, out there having lunches that probably cost more money than what Mr. and Mrs. Magadonia make in a year who fund her lifestyle. And then you go back to Mar-a-Lago where she returns and she's like party. She's like, all these photos of her like, like come on, what's going on? And then you have, and then you have, and then you have Laura, Laura Loomer, 
who was she was a conspiracy theorist says she's she says things like uh, the Democrats and, and the Democrats were working collectively with like Ron DeSantis to change the weather patterns in Iowa to try to harm Donald Trump during the uh, Iowa caucus. I mean, she's she she chained herself to Twitter headquarters in 2018 and claimed that her being banned from Twitter for spreading disinformation was the same as the Holocaust. And she was there with the Star of David ranting and raving that she was a Holocaust victim by chaining herself to the Twitter. This is who Don uh, uh, goes shoulder to shoulder with. She's somebody, by the way, who could become a secretary. I'm not making this up. Don't be like, man, this is what she could become the next secretary of state or the head of a major department. She could be in Trump's cabinet. If Donald Trump wins, I mean, one of the most unhinged right wing nutcases that exist here. She is at Donald Trump's uh, resort where he charges membership fees called Mar-a-Lago. And here's what Trump says about her. He gives her a shout out like he doesn't all like most of his speeches. January 6th anthem. Check. Shout out to Laura Loomer. Check. This is what Donald Trump was doing yesterday. Play the clip. We have a lot of great friends and a lot of great people. Laura, how are you? You look so beautiful, as always. That's a woman with courage. You don't want to be, you don't want to be loomered. If you're loomered, you're in deep trouble. That's the end of your career, in a sense. Thanks, Laura. You know, and he's saying that at the same time, the judge in the criminal case set for trial on April 15th, the Manhattan District Attorney criminal case, Justice Mershon expanded the gag order because Donald Trump spent last week threatening Justice Mershon's daughter. So the Manhattan District Attorney said, hey, we need an amended gag order uh, because this is absurd. And then Donald Trump's lawyer said, no, 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 we need to make sure this is part of Donald Trump's First Amendment rights. He wants to attack your daughter, Justice Mershon. And Justice Mershon's like, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. I'm amending the gag order. Um, and so Donald Trump posted um, you know, these, these things. Um, these were stories by Laura Loomer that Donald Trump is reposting and, and you know, republishing so that Donald Trump can basically say, I'm not the one who did this. It was, you got loomered. And that's when he's saying you got loomered. The website's called loomered.com. And it talk these articles by loomer that same day when he was saying you're getting loomered are, for, are uh, about Justice Mershon's daughter. I mean, how despicable can you get that that's what he was, that he was doing. And so I mentioned before also that you had Laura Loomer she would post things like, it looks like the deep state is activating weather systems to try to control the weather with Ron DeSantis to take down Donald Trump or whatever it is, you know, that they're that they're saying right there. Um, you know, one of the things that MAGAs were doing also when it comes to uh, uh, cat turd, um, they're big fans of cat turd. Here's what cat turd posted as well. This is like one of the big right wing influencers. He says, so last week I got out at daylight to walk my dogs around the cat turd ranch. And for those who follow me, you can wait, clearly wait, wait. see <laughs> the cat turd ranch. Sorry. Uh, you can clearly wait. see this is the yeah. cat turd ranch. I was thinking to myself, finally, what a clear blue sky day it's going to be, which used to be basically every day and seems to never happen anymore. Just then I started watching airplanes everywhere, crisscrossing across the sky. I watched the chemtrails in real time and saw the sky get overcast and turn into fake, milky, murky sky. I took a picture of this. This is not a conspiracy theory. Here's the picture of it actually happening. It was overcast after this. This is real. I mean, and by the way, I mean, you know, you have Cat Turd, Laura Loomer, um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert. These are the leaders in this party. And you got Marjorie Taylor Greene making posts that she thinks that MAGA Mike Johnson MAGA Mike, the right-wing speaker of the House who wants to outlaw IVF, MAGA Mike is actually a secret plant by Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats, and that's why other MAGA Republicans need to um, uh, vacate uh, MAGA Mike because he actually works for Hakeem Jeffries and Nancy Pelosi. And that's actually a statement that Marjorie Taylor Greene— she, she called him a secret Democrat today uh, on the air, live on the air, Ben. Do we have? It's uh, because the, everything's a conspiracy to them, and if it's if it's not a conspiracy, they'll they'll make it a conspiracy because that's the world they like to live in. I don't well, look, think Jared enough Moskowitz, Americans have. This, this is what Marjorie Taylor Greene responded to uh, Congress Member Moskowitz. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene said, "Democrats are saying they will protect Republican Mike Johnson instead of their own Democrat leader, Hakeem Jeffries. The Democrats love Mike Johnson so much." 
He is now their speaker. Poor Hakeem Jeffries. And um, do we have the video of Marjorie Taylor Greene saying this is a Democrat speaker of the House? If we've got that, let's just let's just play that. And this this isn't a Republican speaker we have right now. This is a Democrat speaker in the, of the House because there is zero daylight between what Nancy Pelosi did last Congress and what Mike Johnson is doing now is our so-called Republican speaker of the House. I mean, they're quite literally the most insane people. And, and that's why I say over and over again, I'm like, folks, this is not like liberal v. conservative anymore. This is not like... Democrat be normal Republican. Like there's this MAGA thing that is Loomerd and Marjorie Taylor Greene. By the way, they hate each other because they're both vying for the love of Donald Trump. It's a whole weird drama that plays out, which I won't bore you with. But if you go deep into the world, they hate each other. You've got the Lauren Boberts and the Gateses and the James Comer. And and they all hate each other also. (laughs) They all hate each other. They're they're actually using spies from Russia, foreign agents to try to overthrow the current government and try to impeach President Biden with people. Can I, can I make a note about are- this, um, about this Marjorie Taylor Greene post as well? Her back and forth with Jared Moskowitz, like she thinks she's playing chess here, but she thinks everyone is as stupid as her. I think like she, she thinks she's doing some brilliant form of like reverse psychology here on Moskowitz. And she goes, the Democrats love Mike Johnson, poor Hakeem Jeffries. And uh, Moskowitz, he had responded to this, like uh, Hakeem Jeffries will make a great speaker in January. Don't, don't, don't you worry. You take over the house, you crazy person. And then he responded to her again, saying this boring, like a washing machine, rinse and repeat. Like she thinks that like her tweet is going to make Democrats go, oh, I'm sorry, Hakeem Jeffries. We didn't mean to upset you. We're going to do what Marjorie Taylor Greene said. Like, no, like the Democrats don't legislate based on you tweeting something out. OK, that's like what you do. And that's the kind of tricks that work on you psychologically. But things like that don't work on actual people with half a brain cell or more. So I'm going to put it like that. And I think one of the most underreported stories, quite frankly, and something that I don't think uh, enough Americans quite realize at this point is what we were just saying, just how conspiracy driven these Republicans have become and how they have no semblance at all to the Republican Party of yesterday. This is not a party that even believes in truth whatsoever. Like Jordy was saying before, everything is some sort of grand conspiracy. It can't just be that, oh, that's condensation from the planes and just like a basic, basic science, things you learn in basic science course. No, It's chemtrails. That's the government uh, putting spray in the air so that they can control your brains. You have people like Roseanne, who they hold up as an idol. And you have Roseanne at Mar-a-Lago telling people in the MAGA movement that their kids should not go to college. And, you know, I'll just let her say it. This is this is a mainstream message in MAGA circles. Hey, old bro. How are you doing? I'm here at uh, Mar-a-Lago supporting Kerry Lake, and it was a fantastic evening, and our Trump is here being the DJ, and I've just danced, and everyone's amazed. So I'm just going to say to you, please drop out of college because it's going to ruin your lives. Do me a favor, drop out. They don't teach you nothing good. Uh, Email me or Twitter me or whatever you call me, and I'll help you with your life, but you've got to get out of college because it isn't nothing but devil-worshipping, baby-blood-drinking Democrat donors. Love ya. Yeah, like really, really disturbing, sick people. Um, and and the fact that th- th- that that sickness should not in any way give them cover for their, you know, for their Featured behavior. Featured guest at Mar-a-Lago with Trump yesterday. I mean, let's well, not act like Lumer Roseanne is some... Let's not act like these are, you know, fringe people, right, that are just on the corners of the Internet in their own space. Like this is these are people who are uplifted by Donald Trump, uplifted by these current Republicans. These are the same people who want to go idols. And these are the same people, too, that want to go after uh, people who who may kneel during the, the anthem. There's that clip of Roseanne when she's singing the anthem, just making an absolute mockery of it. And when she like spits and she and she's just being crude during it. And it's just like. Man, these people right now, these MAGA Republicans, they're just so in this this bizarro universe. Sad, sad. Kids, stay stay in school. Stay in don't school. Listen, don't listen don't to Roseanne. Roseanne. I want <laughs> to remind you. Follow Roseanne's you. lead here. 
I want to remind everybody to download Against All Enemies. We're all super proud of that here. You can get it on Apple TV. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on YouTube. Make sure to check it out. Let's try to get it number one on the number chart. One. It already is number one for documentaries. Let's try to get it number one of all genres. We'll be right back after our first quick break of the show. Field of Greens is the healthiest thing I do every day, and I want you on this journey with me. It's literally one scoop a day, and it tastes great. Now, I personally love the strawberry lemonade flavor. It's completely improved my life. Now, this is nutrition the way nature intended. When I have my Field of Greens, I find myself having way more energy throughout the day, and I've noticed healthier hair and skin. Field of Greens has helped me with my digestion and my stomach feels way better. And I just feel better and healthier overall. Now, Field of Greens is radically different. Each organic fruit and vegetable was medically chosen to support heart and vital organ health. Now, I trust Field of Greens to keep me healthy. Now, I promise you're going to love this product. But if for whatever reason you don't, they'll give you a 100% money back guarantee. I got you 15% off your first order plus free shipping. Visit fieldofgreens.com and use promo code MIDAS. That's promo code MIDAS at fieldofgreens.com, fieldofgreens.com. Most clothes are uncomfortable or too tight or never actually the size you really are, not to mention the annoyance of trying to put a good outfit together. Everyone wants to dress their best and look good at all times because, frankly, it's a confidence booster. So here's the deal. Men's closets were due for a radical reinvention and Roan stepped up to the challenge. Roan's commuter collection is the most comfortable, breathable, and flexible set of products known to man, and here's why. Roan helps you get ready for any occasion with the commuter collection, which offers the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, and polos. You never have to worry about what to wear when you have the Roan Commuter Collection. Roan's comfortable four-way stretch fabric provides breathability and flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy what life throws your way from your commute to work to your 18 holes of golf. It's time to feel confident again without the hassle. With Roan's wrinkle release technology, wrinkles disappear as you stretch and wear the products. It's that easy. And with Gold Fusion anti-odor technology, you'll be smelling fresh and clean all day long. And on top of that, Roan is 100% machine washable, so you can ditch the dry cleaner altogether. I absolutely love Roan. It's comfortable yet professional and has truly become my favorite clothing. We're on the move a lot, whether it's jumping from meeting to meeting or catching a flight or doing a hot take, whatever. Roan Commuter Collection has never let me down. The versatility and overall comfort of the collection is undefeated. Even after I wear it all day, I still feel super fresh because of that gold fusion anti-odor technology. The Commuter Collection can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. Head to Roan.com slash Midas and use that promo code Midas to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to R-H-O-N-E dot com slash M-E-I-D-A-S and use that code Midas. It's time to find your corner office comfort. Let's go, man. Shout out Roan. Roan's been a sponsor for a little bit now. Make sure y'all show them some love. We genuinely love their clothes. They're fantastic. The link's in the description of the pod and the YouTube. Field of Greens, new sponsor for the pod. Pumped about this one, too. People have said, I've been looking kind of good lately, and I kind of think my Field of Greens. So and You're wearing check. your green shirt in celebrations. That's it's, you know, it's very on brand. Check them out. We uh, we spoke with the the doctor behind this. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's really, mm -hmm. really good stuff. Let's talk about the Trump stock DJT. Another horrific day today. In the past five days, the stock's been down 33%. If you just look at the fundamentals of this company that were released at the beginning of this week, you would see that in 2023, it lost $58 million. It only made $4.1 million in revenue with an M. In the final quarter of last year, it made $1.2 million in revenue. Gets less than 10 million unique view, uh, unique users, and I'm being generous with that in a month. So more people watch our network here at the Midas Touch in a 48-hour period. Um, 
at multiples of the total amount of unique users who go on Truth Social in 30 days. More people here in a 48-hour period. Yet this thing is trading like a meme stock. It was launched via a SPAC process, special purpose acquisition company. And I hope one of the things that y'all will appreciate about Midas Touch is that we've been all over this story now for three years. And I think if you go back to our reporting when this thing was first announced, we were three years ahead telling you everything that was going to happen that you're seeing now each and every day. And I think that's a testament to how data-driven and well-researched it is. Not not giving hopium or like we wanted to share with you here. We have to focus on fundamentals and data and go past the headlines. And I think everything we said there is now proven, you know, to be accurate. You know, also an important thing to point out when you go through some of the uh, financials um, uh, that were reported to the SEC, the independent auditor, who it turns out has like. It's like a little home looking thing in in Colorado, like not one of the big four accounting firms. It's just a dude named uh, Borgers, uh, Ben Borgers. Good name, at least. I don't know if he's a good accountant or not a good accountant. (laughs) You like both the first and last name or you just like the first name? The first name. But I like Borgers too. Borgers Borgers is cool. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know what, but, um, but, 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 (laughs) but, but. it's not one it of the could, big. It could be like a football firms. player, Ben Ben Borgers, ben ben wide Borgers. receiver. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, this is who's the independent. To, to his credit, he did state that it would be that there are significant, there's substantial doubt about the Trump organization or about the Trump media company as an ongo existing on an ongoing basis based on its massive amount of net losses. So I give him credit for reporting that. But like, if you just take recent. Uh, of this stock. It's so Trumpian. Like um, yesterday, two brothers who helped fund Trump media company plead guilty to insider trading. Michael Schwarzman and Gerald Schwarzman made millions, prosecutors say. How about this? Donald Trump sues Truth Social co-founders, says they're not entitled to stock shares. Or how about this one? Trump media co-founders sue Trump's Truth Social merger to block potential $10 deal. They're exclusive. Trump media saved in 2022 by Russian American under criminal investigation, who's actually different from the Schwartzmans, although the Schwartzmans were listed, or one of the Schwartzmans listed family trust that was created by this Russian linked entity, Paxum Bank, in the Dominica which is known for funding porn companies, which because it wasn't to do business in the U.S., had to create a family trust to loan $8 million to Trump Media at the end of 2021 and 2022 to keep it afloat. And so you add all of those factors to to make it a Trumpian. Former MAGA Republican Devin Nunes is the CEO who was paid $750,000 in 2023, which is almost a quarter of all of the revenue that was made by Trump media. You'll get even more. Dan Scavino, Trump's former uh, deputy chief of staff who works on the campaign, was given a promissory note worth $2.2 million with $4.1 million in total revenue and was given $120 in cash. Speaking of cash, Cash Patel got about $120,000 to consult for Trump media. You want me to make it more Trumpian? Trump is refusing to give the co-founders of Trump media, one person who was on The Apprentice, the 8.7% of the company they're entitled to, even though Donald Trump already has over 55% of the shares of this company, he wants the other 8.7%. You want me to make it even more Trumpian? A guy by the name of Wilkerson was the blower who worked for Trump media, who turned against Trump, provided all this information to the SEC and Department of Justice and complained that Trump took his shares and gave it to Melania Trump. And so, look, this is all divorced from any of these other cases. Like, this is what a Trump organization is about, right? $58 million in losses, not that many unique users, And then what was Trump trying to do today as the stock went down? We'll make it even more Trumpian, making all 
all of these posts about what a great company it is and how people should trust this company, his go-to to get the word out. And again, that's skirting SEC and securities law, in my opinion. These things constitute material statements about the company. As a publicly traded company, those have to be released, in my opinion, as a formal press release and then posted as a material event in 8K or otherwise on the SEC's Edgar filing system. And so you look at this from every specific angle and you go, this is what Trump is, what a mess. Everybody suing, everybody trying to take the shares from people, people being criminally prosecuted, links to a porn bank in an island I never even heard of called Dominica. And then you have, and then links to Vladimir Putin, who's, who's nephew, you know, who's some the guy named Alexander Smirnov's nephew. Always, hap always happens. Uh, always, always goes back to Russia. Bank, you know, and it, it is some wild stuff, but take a look at this. This is Barry Diller chairman of IAC and Expedia Group, right? But just so you know who Diller is, like Diller founded Fox, <laughs> okay? Diller founded Fox Broadcasting Company and USA Broadcasting. I mean, he is someone who's an actual real business leader. Here's what he has to say about Trump media. Play this clip. Not a political question about former President Trump, but actually a business question about Truth Social. You've seen this stock on the move in this, in this, I'll call it remarkable, maybe even crazy way. Just say two words, GameStop. GameStop. That's what you think is going on here. And it's a, I mean, it's ridiculous. Do you the company think, has no revenue. But do you think it could ever be a, a bigger business? Do no. you think if he wins the presidency, no. it becomes a... Why? An, I'm asking... Why would it be bigger? Look, he's only interesting now because he's out there entertaining the folks. I hope if he does get elected, he just plays golf for four years. But So do you think that all of the investors... Investors in this are are getting scammed. Do you think they think this is a transference I of I think wealth from I, from one side to the other, and that's the goal? What do you think is happening? I think they're dopes. I mean, who would buy a company that literally has? I mean, I think what does it have? Thirty dollars of revenue. Uh, why would you put a? How could you put a value on it? They're buying it for other reasons, just like they bought theaters when there was no theater business or they bought GameStop or whatever. It's stupid. It's stupid stuff. It was a thousand times revenue, I think. What? I think okay. it was four, four, wasn't it four million? It was four, mil four million four dollars in revenue. Value, value, That's no, four no, million dollars in revenue. It's ridiculous. Four, I'm not saying it's not revenue. Four million. Why are you even talking about this? It's a scam, just like everything he's ever been involved in is some sort of con. Um, let me pivot. Amazing in. survival of a of a con man is just beyond comprehension, but there it is. Look, and good for Barry Diller, because when I'm watching that, you know, I'm seeing that CNBC host, the one who talked at the end, who's the one. Oh, who he's liked. terrible. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he basically has Donald Trump on, let's Donald Trump spew whatever. And it's all, it's ultimately why for me, you know, when you start watching CNBC, all of the coverage, if they talk about, uh, Trump media should resemble something, though, to what Barry Diller said. He goes, right. why are you even asking? You're CNBC, he's basically saying. Like, why are you asking me these stupid ass, excuse me, why are you asking me these stupid <laughs> questions? Of course this is a, of course this is not real. Look at the revenue. What are you talking? You're supposed to be a business network, you know? And by the way, that's the same energy that President Biden channels when he's like, we're the United States of America. What are you talking about? You're singing the J6 anthem. How are you not covering that, New York Times? How are you not covering that in the right way, legacy media? What are, we're the United States of America. And, I, and that's, to me, profoundly, you know, no, they go, not, not a political thing. We want to ask about, none of this is really even political. Trump's attacking the daughter of a judge and, and saying you're loomered? That's not conservative. That's crazy. That's dangerous. That's wannabe fashion. That's not a conservative viewpoint. And by the way, that is why I did an interview. We'll show a little bit later with the former National Security Advisor, John Bolton. And I want to answer a question that Michael Cohen asked me as well. And Cohen, you go back to political beatdown. Cohen said, Ben, why did you not call out John Bolton for not standing up in that moment when he was there. I said, that's a good question. I think it's a fair criticism, Cohen. I just said, I intend to do that after we get through this election. 
I said, if I were to confront him on that interview right now, what would that, I can't rewind the time. What I want to do right now is people always say you need to reach beyond the echo chamber, Ben. Reach be That's what I want to do. I'm not going to reach beyond the echo chamber if some of my interviews become confrontational thing. That's not my purpose of this. I wanted to give people a data point. Yeah, what are you Donald accomplishing? If, right? If Donald Trump. What? I said, because what are you accomplishing if he came on and you just berated him, right? Like, and and obviously we have the most agreements with with somebody like that, right? And our audience is quite aware of that. Like, they're like, very aware of that. But you want to accomplish things with these interviews and with your your interview. I think you did an incredible job. Probably could have combed your hair. I'll, I'll say that's my one criticism for you. Probably could, we did little, the interview at five a.m. Pacific. Little, I, I little, quite little literally. Comb. I I like that Ben didn't come out there. <laughs> I when I when I Ben you really upset him with that, but you should not have said that. But I like that he didn't comb his hair for the interview. I, just, I thought he looked. I thought he looked really good. What I'm I did for that interview time. was I rolled out of <laughs> rolled out of bed at four thirty because he's on the East Coast. I put on a button down and then I did like this right here with my hair. Good. And then and then I was like <laughs> I was wearing shorts. Which obviously people can see, and then I, and then boom, former National Security Advisor John Bolton was on the screen. But he, the, what I wanted to, what I wanted to accomplish, though, and I think we did, you know, and it, it was to show simply a very basic message that Trump's own former National Security Advisor thinks that Trump is the biggest threat to our national security. Yes. That's an incredible point that needs to get out with clarity. I know our audience is super smart. I think everyone's aware of the shortcomings and what could have been done. I can't go back and change the past. What I can do is try to reach beyond the echo chamber right now. And if there's anybody on the fence, they can see something and they go, oh, this former national security advisor saying he's a threat to our national security and he should be disqualified from running from... Well, that's the that's that that that's the purpose. And, and, and I Ben, think it, it was a it, it was a great interview, Ben. It was a great interview, and also what it does too from a macro level, it does it for those people on the fence, right? Because even us at Midas Touch and the Midas Touch Network, some of these legacy media agencies out there, they'll look at us and they'll just label us this far leftist group or this ultra progressive group, and it's like, look, we don't have any problems with progressives, right? But that's not really us. But but we're cool if you match up our you know value by value. <clears throat> I'm sure there's a lot of overlap pro-democracy at the end of the day. And so when someone like John Bolton comes on the channel and Ben's able to have a civil discussion, it dispels a lot of these, you know, pre-written narratives about the network as well. Where yeah, we still have these labels, right, Jordy? Like we're, exactly. we're, we're, we're tired. We're tired of the labels. Like enough, enough of the labels. Our country's on the line. Okay. Like, exactly. like, we, like the stakes are so high. Like this is literally an existential time for our country and not only for our country, but like, frankly, for humanity, for like decency, for mm. truth. Self. And that's why, you know, when Jordy, we were just watching the CNBC clip and they're like, not to be political, but to, it's like, no, it's not, this isn't, we're not, we're not being political. Okay. Like, yeah. which, can, we, can we be objective about the craziness that we're seeing? Can, can you be objective as a business network when you see stock that exactly. is trading? At a multi-billion dollar valuation when it lost $58 million on revenues of $4 million and is losing users by the day, you don't have to like give it this extra air of legitimacy because Donald yes, Trump exactly. is behind it. Like we need to be able to call things out as they are. I think and you know a lot of people had wised up to this on some of the networks when they saw, you know, people like Jim Cramer, who kind of became a joke where people would build index funds that were specifically the opposite of Jim Cramer's picks. And they <laughs> would far outseed like the market, like, like th that's how people had success on the market by literally building index funds that were the opposite of what Jim Cramer told you to do. But I think when, you know, when you see things like that, like what we watched before, I think it kind of exposes kind of a lot of the faults that we see in the business media as well. And remember, Remember, that's CNBC. Now, what do you think folks are getting from Fox Business, right? What do you think folks are getting from all these other business channels, you know, and 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 
and, and it's it's just factually inaccurate and and you totally. can get bad information but that's why you know when you have uh you know people who are willing to stand up and and call out the bs whether it's a john bolton or a barry diller whether you agree with them on the other nine out of ten issues or not i think it's important to elevate those voices and to get them out there and ben that that interview by the way got like a ton of press was written about on a lot of the legacy uh that your bolton interview was was written about on a lot of these other kind of legacy channels and stuff and so we know we know that message is definitely getting out far and wide so it's great to see let, let, let me give you this example too and I'll, I'll i'll tease a broader discussion discussion on this where the media literacy their, their their lack of even trying to understand or their intentional manipulation when it comes to the issue of this bond that donald trump has to post in the new york attorney general civil fraud case and you hear them saying well bonds aren't supposed to be punitive and we've never heard of a bond this much and you know when bernie madoff went to jail the bond was this and there are other people who only have to pay a million dollar bond a 464 million dollar bond folks you got to know the facts okay that, that, that's that's the job of the media needs to be to educate here, right? And the issue is, is that you're th you're referring to criminal bonds about someone posting a bond while they uh, are getting ready for a criminal trial in those amounts. This is a civil bond in every civil case. If you want the privilege, because that's what it is, because you've already lost the case to appeal your loss and stay the enforcement of the judgment because you are a loser and 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 the law wants to protect a corpus of funds during the appeal process for the winner while you're the loser the law says you have to post a bond that's equal to the judgment plus post judgment interest that's the issue okay you think about the Eugene Carroll case Eugene Carroll would be very worried if Donald Trump filed an appeal and dragged this out and the money wasn't secured somewhere for his sexually assaulting her, the 83.3 million. So you have to post a bond equal to it, plus post-judgment interest. And Donald Trump leaned on Chubb for that one. Here, there was this company called Knight Specialty Insurance, which I had actually never heard of, Knight Specialty Insurance. I knew the founder, after the fact, aware of him, someone named Don Hankey, because that name was familiar, because this is someone who um, was the largest non-institutional shareholder of Axos Bank, which refinanced uh, uh, Doral, Trump Doral, as well as Trump Tower. So I was familiar with the name. So then I Googled when this all happened. I'm like, what's Knight Specialty? And the thing on their website, they said their entire revenue when they posted it, said $545 million. And I'm thinking to myself, whoa, $545 million. The bond was reduced by the appellate division from $464 million to $175. The judgment still $464, but the bond was reduced. But still, that's about 32% of the entire revenue of this company, Knight Specialty Insurance, is a bond that they're vouching for. That seems to be curious, if not unlawful to me, or at least doesn't satisfy the requirement. I don't know what the New York requirements were, but it actually turns out, or it appears, and the New York Attorney General is going to challenge this at a hearing that Justice Ngoron set for April 22nd, 2024, that this was not an adequate bond, that the, the night specialty insurance run by Don Hankey does not have the necessary funds that are required to be a surety in the state of New York. So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about as well New York uh, Justice Juan Mershon. We're talking about Goron with civil, with criminal. It's New York Justice Juan Mershon rejecting Trump's absolute immunity. Also, Judge Cannon rejected Donald Trump's motion to dismiss on the Presidential Records Act. And Judge Scott McAfee rejected Donald Trump's motion to dismiss on First Amendment grounds. A lot of news, as I said, not a lot of, I said, a very light news day. And I'm saying it sarcastically, of course. Let's talk about all of that and more. Let's take our last quick break of the show. Your dog is a member of the family. Serve them top quality food they deserve. Serve them Nom Nom. Nom Nom delivers freshly made dog food personalized to your dog's preferences and unique caloric needs. 
Dogs love great tasting meals just like us, yet their nutritional needs are different than ours. That's why Nom Nom's nutrient packed recipes are developed by board certified veterinary nutritionists, freshly made and shipped free to your door. It's made with 100% premium ingredients, which means 0% freaky fillers or funky stuff. Nom Nom has already delivered over 40 million meals. That's because the best dogs, like yours, deserve the best food. Nom Nom. Whether it's Chewy.com, PetSmart stores, or delivered straight to your door, Nom Nom provides your dog's favorite recipes whenever, wherever, and however you want them. Say goodbye to boring dog food and give your dog a reason to run to their bowl with every meal every day. By now, you know my dog Mochi is my best friend and my little baby girl. Look, I'm putting photos of me with her up right now. That's why I only feed my doggo Nom Nom because she deserves the best. Nom Face the Shored or your money back guarantee. Nom Face is Nom Speak for dogs deliriously excited about dinner, by the way. Nom Nom is now available at Chewy.com and your local PetSmart stores or for 50% off your no risk trial box. Go to trynom.com slash Midas. That's spelled try N O M dot com slash M E I D A S for 50% off your first subscription order. I saw my uncle over the recent holiday and he came right up to me, shook my hand, looked me in the eye and thanked me over and over again for gifting him MD hearing aids. This podcast is sponsored by MD Hearing. Now MD Hearing is an FDA registered rechargeable hearing aid that costs a fraction of what typical hearing aids cost. MD Hearing's Neo model costs over 90% less than clinic hearing aids. And the Neo is MD Hearing's smallest hearing aid ever. It fits right inside your ear and no one will ever know that it's there. Now, MD Hearing recently cut their price in half. That means you can get high quality, rechargeable, and digital hearing aids for only $297 a pair. MD Hearing was founded by an ENT surgeon who saw how many of his patients needed hearing aids but couldn't afford them. He then made it his mission to develop a quality hearing aid that anyone could afford. Now, as I mentioned, my uncle is over the moon with his MD hearing aids. He also is so much more present now when we're all together because they actually work. He swears by them and has told me over and over again that they're his favorite pair of hearing aids that he's ever had. Get the hearing you deserve with MD hearing. Go to shopmdhearing.com and use promo code MIDAS to get their new $297 when you buy a pair offer. Plus, they're adding a free extra charging case, a $100 value, just for our listeners of the Midas Touch podcast. That's shopmdhearing.com and use our promo code MIDAS and get their new $297 when you buy a pair offer. We're back. Jordy with those ad reads. Brett well, with so the ad reads. Super things. I love the Nom Nom read because we've now all taken turns doing that read and showing cute photos of our doggos. And Nom Nom is phenomenal. Link in description. Great codes. Great, great discounts. MD Hearing. That was a straight up true story. Came right over to me. Shook me in the hand. He was so grateful so. for these hearing aids. They, yeah, no, but but like those are legit. So if you're in the market, <laughs> I, I, I hear nothing but good things from the MD Hearing aids. So check them out if, if, if you need a pair. Let me do a lightning round of these legal developments. Ooh, I'm lightning sure, round. Lightning I'm round. sure I'll, I'll, I'll save some of the nuances for legal AF because I know you come here from some of the politics well. But look, I was talking about this, this bond issue. The New York Attorney General, Letitia James, is now challenging the adequacy of this bond by Knight Specialty Insurance. Knight Specialty Insurance, this Don Henke guy who's a Trump supporter who refinanced Trump Tower and Trump Doral in Miami, he, he's now saying or one of his representatives are basically saying, well, look, we're not licensed in New York, so therefore we don't have to abide by the New York rules on sureties, which to me is like, okay, if you do business in New York, you have to follow the New York laws. But not only that- Get, get out do... of following the rules with this one weird trick. <laughs> don't, don't get licensed. Like, I don't know what <laughs> You're now not only doing business in New York, you're doing business in the New York court system. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so look, I know a lot of people are upset that Justice and Goran set this for April 22nd. They want it to be set sooner. Um, it's going to be a, a full, I think, evidentiary hearing. Like, Hinky may have to show up. Heck, Trump may have 
have to take a break from the Manhattan District Attorney criminal case to potentially even testify here about his assets and, and the process here. We'll see what happens if even Trump's going to have to testify. You know, I'm sure there'll be some other Trump organization people testifying, but this can result in some real major problems for, for Donald Trump. But here's the thing. The appellate division, to me, is to blame for this delay. You can't let Donald Trump off the hook on things because if you give Donald Trump an inch, he takes your life. If you Let me say that again. If you give Donald Trump an inch, he takes your life. He doesn't care. You can't give him any convenience. You can't give him any benefit of the doubt. He will screw you and he will take that and manipulate it, right? The appellate division took the bond that Trump owed. They reduced it to $175 million. They gave Trump the 10 days. Trump then used the 10 days to do this deal with his buddy Hanky with a company that's apparently not even licensed to be a surety or doesn't have the adequate credentials to be a surety in New York who didn't post an adequate bond that's now being challenged. And that leads to a delay. You have to, you know, you have to, Donald Trump's a wannabe fascist, right? So he only knows iron fist, right? You have to just say, you are a weak traitor, fascist coward. Go screw yourself. Get out of here. Scram. Like you got to like look him in the eyes and you got to let him know that you're not afraid of him because the moment you show fear, you become the Republican Party, which is taken over by MAGA. Trump's all a bluff. It's all BS. That's why Trump hates the people like the Jamie Raskins of the world and the, you know, and, 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 and an Adam Schiff and people like who just say, you are a freaking loser. The special counsel, Jack Smith's, the New York attorney general, Letitia James, the fearless people like Fulton County District Attorney Phony Willis, because he can't stand when people stand up to him and he's a weak coward. So to me, it's the appellate divisions. But what could be the fallout here from this? Well, now we'll have to wait to April 22nd. Notably, it's before justice in Goron. And what could happen is if this bond is declared unauthorized, which I mean, it, it seems that's the direction it's going, then the assets could start to be seized again. But then Donald Trump still bought what whatever it was, 35 or 45 days um, in order to um, you know, come up with another way other than night specialty through this scheme. Just think about it. He was found liable in a fraud case, and then he found the surety that's not really licensed to even do this or is unauthorized. This is who he is it in sounds everything. Sounds like more fraud. <laughs> this is what he does in every single thing that he does. Should be noted, though, New York Attorney General Letitia James isn't letting him off the hook. She filed a letter brief to Justice and Gore on earlier today saying to please enhance the powers of that independent monitor, the retired federal judge, Barbara Jones. Let her conduct an investigation into whether or not the Trump organization knowingly concealed the perjury that uh, former CFO Alan Weisselberg is testifying to give enhanced powers to the independent monitor. I think Justice Ngoron is going to do that. Let's go um, kind of down the hallways in New York from the civil courthouse to the criminal courthouse with Justice Mershon. He denied Donald Trump's motion to dismiss on presidential immunity grounds, saying, Trump, you can't file this 17 days before trial is about to start setting aside the fact that it's a frivolous motion and substance, you could have raised this issue a year ago, uh, months ago, in your motions in limine. You refuse to do that. You're obviously doing this in bad faith. Denied. We're going to trial on April 15th. Then you had an order by Judge Scott McAfee who rejected Donald Trump's motion to dismiss on First Amendment grounds. Just think about the various arguments right here. Donald Trump argues for presidential immunity, he should be able to do whatever he wants to do, order SEAL Team 6 to kill people. The rules don't apply to him. His secondary argument or interrelated argument is a First Amendment argument that he makes in all of these cases, that basically when he engages in these crimes, that's actually the speech that he's engaged in. So he should be protected by the First Amendment. So when he tells people to try to overthrow the results of a free and fair election, because he's like a bank robber who says, give me all the money, it's saying, give me all the money and not completing the bank robbery, that's protected First Amendment speech is the analogy, basically, that Trump tries to give. Of course, that's not the case when speech 
forms the basis or is integral, as it says in the case law, to committing the crime. You don't have a free speech right to go and commit crime. So Judge Scott McAfee rejected Donald Trump's motion to dismiss on First Amendment grounds there. Then you go to Judge Eileen Cannon in the Southern District of Florida. There, Trump was in a, making the other argument that under the Presidential Records Act, he could telepathically declassify records. And by placing records, including our nuclear codes and war plans and other sensitive national defense information into boxes, because he was in office when they put him in the boxes and shipped it to Mar-a-Lago, he claims that these are now personal records, that the government doesn't have any right to them, and that a judge nor a jury can even comment on Donald Trump declaring our nation secrets and nuclear codes, his personal property. Stephen Miller submitted an amicus brief about that, which Judge Eileen Cannon said is very insightful and interesting when she accepted it. Remember, she requested that special counsel Jack Smith engage with scenarios about whether Donald Trump can basically declare this as his own personal property and that he's above the law. The, the, the news cycle moved so quickly, but special counsel Jack Smith did exactly what we told you he was going to do. He didn't take the bait. He went on to say, look, I'm going to provide you with the accurate jury instructions, not the unlawful ones that you want me to do. And by the way, if you are thinking about providing unlawful jury instructions, let me know now because the Presidential Records Act is a civil statute that has nothing to do with the Espionage Act. So if you are if you think the PRA has anything to do with Donald Trump's theft of national defense secrets, let me know now because I'll go to the appellate courts right now. I'll go to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals or I'll seek a writ of mandate or with the 11th Circuit to order that you comply with the law. Notably, when Judge Eileen Cannon just denied Donald Trump's motion to dismiss on the Presidential Records Act ground, she denied it, but she says in her own kind of canon way, I'm denying it for purposes of my pretrial rulings, when she should have said, I'm denying it, period, full stop. And then she said, I am not going to let you know, Special Counsel Jack Smith, my views about the Presidential Records Act. Um, and whether that that interplays with the Espionage Act, which it doesn't, we're going to wait later. So what's Judge Eileen Cannon doing there? It's obvious to lawyers in national security law and people who can kind of read between the lines. What she's basically threatening she's going to do and extending also to Donald Trump's lawyers a coded message is, I'll let a jury be selected. And then once a jury is selected, what happens is jeopardy attaches. That means that if she then dismisses the case, you can't appeal it, and then Donald Trump can't be tried again because it would be double jeopardy, and he has a constitutional right not to be tried again. That's why it's so important that these jury instructions happen the right way. So what she is almost hinting at is that she may revisit it after a jury is selected. So what is special counsel Jack Smith going to do in response? He's got this figured out. Don't worry, and let me tell you what I think he's going to do. I think he's going to file motion and eliminate. He's not going to do anything right away because she wrote that order in a way where he won. So he really can't appeal the order. And that was one of her. She thinks she's being sneaky, but Jack Smith's several steps ahead of her. So he's going to file a pretrial motion and eliminate demanding that she issue an order before the jury is selected. A motion to eliminate is just a pretrial motion. Now, if she does not rule or then she defers that pretrial motion, I think Jack Smith realized she'll probably screw up before then and give me a chance to go to the 11th Circuit. So let me not kind of prematurely go to the 11th Circuit and have it backfire. Let me do it as a motion to eliminate in a pretrial motion. Then when she refuses to rule, then he'll seek the writ of mandate um, he'll seek an order that the 11th Circuit order her to comply with the law to avoid the issue of double jeopardy attaching the way I described. But here's the ultimate thing that no one's been talking about that I think special counsel Jack Smith has in his pocket, which is New Jersey. What do I mean? That's where Ben Minster's located. A lot of people are saying, why hasn't he yet filed Donald Trump seems to have committed a lot of crimes in Bedminster with these documents. Why hasn't he filed the case there or brought another superseding indictment there? I think he is waiting, still well within the statute of limitations, I think, for him to bring the case in New Jersey. I think if Judge Eileen Cannon ever makes an unlawful ruling where double jeopardy would attach, 
which Jack Smith will guard against through the strategy I told you. He's got in his back pocket, I think, the insurance policy of I'm going to file these Espionage Act charges in New Jersey. We'll get a normal judge, Democrat or Republican, at least someone who follows the law and is not Judge Eileen Cannon. So I think he has several steps ahead thought through this process. So that's your legal update. And Brett, if you will, tell us about We've been seeing this over and over and over again. You've got um, on the political side of things or the campaign side of things, you've got President Biden now deploying his funds. You mentioned this earlier in the show in a very micro targeted way and running a highly sophisticated campaign. And on the other hand, you've got Lara Trump talking about her singles and her music and then begging people for money. It's very odd. Take us through that. Well, let's see what Lara Trump's doing. Let's kick it off with that. How about that? Hey, everybody. It's RNC co-chair Lara Trump. If you can't afford a donation today, I ask that you would save it for a later date. But if you can donate even as much as $5, it will go a long way. I'm going to say this. If you cannot afford a donation of $5 and you want to donate to the RNC and you have to save up for it, I'm going to say your money is probably not best spent giving it to Laura Trump to pay a supposed billionaire's legal fees. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to start what a, there. What a, okay. what a bonkers thing to say if you can't afford the $5 to save up and then donate to us. <laughs> That's up. not the messaging. It's usually like if you can't afford to donate, y'all, then, then invest your energy and efforts into other places. If you were a sane person that actually cared about other people and humans, not save what you can and then give it to us. It's the reverse Robin Hood, man. Well, anyway, President Biden's campaign has a whole lot of money as Donald Trump's campaign continues to just uh, bleed money. Uh, and if you live in a swing state, you've probably seen this. And I'm curious, like, let us know even right now if you're watching this live with us. Um, you know, if you've seen, if you live in a swing state, swing districts, if you've seen these President Biden ads on the air, I'm, I'm curious to get just an anecdotal perspective here. And you could let us know in the comments because from emails that we've received, from comments that we've received on social media and from just the data and the ad spends that we've seen be reported, uh, the Biden campaign is spending heavily on TV ads and in micro-targeted ads across the country in swing states, on digital, on TV. They're hammering home the issue of Roe v. Wade, which is obviously a huge energizer for President Biden's voters. Uh, they're hammering home issues like infrastructure, um, discussing things like January 6th. I want to show you this ad right now that is in heavy rotation in swing states that was just released by the Biden campaign on Roe. For 54 years, they were trying trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it, and I'm proud to have done it. In 2016, Donald Trump ran to overturn Roe v. Wade. Now, in 2024, he's running to pass a national ban on a woman's right to choose. I'm running to make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again, so women have a federal guarantee to the right to choose. Donald Trump doesn't trust women. I do. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. And we're starting to see that this messaging is really resonating with people and that these ad spends are effective at the level that President Biden is doing them with the locations that he's put uh, doing them. Like Ben said earlier in the episode, uh, we try not to dwell here on poll numbers. I tend to think that the polls are so incredibly faulty and uh, we always want to treat all these elections as if the pro-democracy community is 10 points behind, not 10 points ahead. But I think it's worth mentioning these shifts when we get them, since the traditional media likes to focus on all the bad news all the time. And speaking of 10 points ahead, there was a new FNM research poll, for example, in Pennsylvania that has Biden up 10. Biden is up four nationally in a new general election poll from Marquette University Law School. Trump in that same poll was up four last month. Biden's plus one in the new data for progress poll. Biden's plus 10 in the Newburgh Strategy Colorado poll. Biden's plus two in morning consult in the general election poll. Biden is up two in the new Emerson poll. Biden's up two in the new NPR Marist poll, PBS poll. Um, and Biden has also recently taken the lead in the betting market, predict it, where people bet who is going to win the election. And even in polls that Biden is still down in, you see this shift where week after week, Donald Trump continues to lose ground and President Biden's numbers continue to increase. And like I said, let's put the polls aside for 
a sec. Let's always put the polls aside. But but I, I you know it's, I think it's important though that as we're just deluged with bad news from mainstream media all the time, that you start to see the you know positive numbers. I, I do think that's important. Um, let's look at the actual data on the ground that we're seeing in elections. We've reported on a lot of these primaries and the successes that uh, Democrats have had in these elections and how Republicans continue to underperform, how Donald Trump continues to underperform. Well, this week, the Democrats secured a significant win in Green Bay, Wisconsin, after the Green Bay City Council flipped to become a pro-Democratic majority. Previously, MAGA Republicans held six seats on the City Council, with Democrats holding the remaining six seats. But after Tuesday's election, Democrats now hold seven seats on the City Council, with Republicans holding just five. And Republicans view this as very important and very indicative of the election. And you could tell that because Donald Trump personally visited Green Bay this week in advance of that election. And Donald Trump still could not sway voters, enough voters to vote for the Republican candidates there. Ben Wickler, I got to give a shout out to Ben Wickler, who is the chair of the uh, Wisconsin Dems. He is absolutely crushing it. Uh, I think kind of every state should model their voter outreach program, should model the way that they're doing messaging based on what Ben is doing in Wisconsin. The success that he has had there is just absolutely incredible. Big Ben episode, by the way, Ben. Huh? A lot of, a lot of yeah, Ben's. We, we had Ben on the show once. We did, yeah. We had been, we had been on the show. He's, he's great. He's, he's just. We should have him back again. We should, and because it's a thing, you know. And I was saying it earlier, um, towards the intro of the episode. But when you look at, like, the pure, like, what is set up on the ground in these states, who are the people, right? Who are the people in charge of these operations? The Republicans are just so outmatched going to this election. Like, like I said earlier, under Lara Trump, while she's begging people for their five dollars that they don't have. You have Democrats in all these swing states building all these field offices, and you have people like Lara Trump um, and shuttering offices throughout the country. But l- let me go on. Let me hit some of this other uh, stuff over here. Um, you have Biden out there talking about the real issues, right? While you have um, Donald Trump speaking about praising the January 6th choir, um, while you have him um, constantly talking about being electrocuted rather than sharks and playing the J6 anthem. You have President Biden um, at an event with Senator Bernie Sanders this week, um, teaming up to promote the administration's efforts to lower the cost of inhalers, other health care needs, lowering the cost of insulin, um, including the $35 a month insulin um, for people on Medicare and the 2000 a year cap on prescription drugs that, by the way, zero Republican lawmakers voted for. You have Vice President Harris out there speak on issues relating to the climate, um, noting that President Biden and the vice president have made the largest investments ever to take on the climate crisis with trillion dollars over the next 10 years to create jobs, provide clean energy investments, lower energy bills, and expand access to uh, capital. And then you have all these warning signs on the other side from all these elections. If you look at the data from the primaries, the hard data, not the polling, like we were saying before, over 120,000 Republicans voted against Donald Trump in Wisconsin. It should be an uncontested race. Nikki Haley isn't in the race anymore. Ron DeSantis isn't in this race anymore. But over 120,000 Republicans stood up and they voted against Donald Trump in the state of Wisconsin. Nikki Haley pulled more than 75,000 votes alone. 75,000 for a candidate who is not even in the race. And then I think it's always indicative to look at what is, what are the local, what's the local media saying? What's in the local papers? And this was in the Milwaukee Sentinel right here. I'll I'll show you the headline. Donald Trump minus 120,000 Wisconsin GOP votes becomes Tuesday's biggest loser. We're seeing this with like every election guys, right? Like this, this is not a one-off This is a clear pattern, and you continue to see now more investments by Democratic infrastructure in getting out the message, in getting out the votes. You saw the Democratic Legislative Campaign Committee just today launch the Down Ballot Defenders Program, the first ever branded grassroots donor program to elect Democrats to state legislatures around the country. Uh, We got the big news today that No Labels has abandoned their effort to find a candidate for the 2024 election because let's face it, President Biden has been an incredibly successful president, historically so. 
He's done an incredible job. He's got so many accomplishments. He appeals to the middle of the country like no labels wanted to claim that they were going to do. But you have Nikki Haley voters saying that they want to vote for President Biden. So it ended up that there was no lane for this whole no labels scheme whatsoever. The national director for no labels today was asked if he had to choose on Fox who to vote for, who would he vote for? He said he would vote for President Biden in the upcoming election. So you start to see this energy continue to solidify around pro-democracy while Donald Trump just looks weaker, more decrepit. You see his businesses crumbling around him. You see his legal strategies crumbling around him. And this is only going to intensify, in my opinion, and that gap will only widen that disparity between Donald Trump, President Biden, the pro-democracy community, these pro-autocracy forces as we head into November. But it's not going to happen on its own. That's why we all here need to stay involved. Ben. Brett, couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, appreciate your uh your analysis right there. I want to remind everybody about Against All Enemies. It's out right now. Make sure you uh, give it a download and tell some friends and others about it. Um, again, you can get it on Apple TV. It's out on Amazon now, or you can get it on YouTube. Make sure you, make sure you leave the top reviews that any of those platforms allow. Let's try to get it to number one across all genres. We're going to do an after show after this show, patreon.com slash Midas Touch, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Midas Touch. Looking forward to doing that after show there. Store.MidasTouch.com for all the best pro-democracy gear. And uh, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel. We want to get to 3 million subscribers by the middle of the summer would be great. I think we are on track to hit that. With your support, we can do it. And I want to thank all the Midas Mighty out there for watching. We're so grateful for everything you do to protect, preserve, and defend our democracy each, every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jordy, I'll let you take it away. Shout out to the Midas Mighty! The Midas Mighty stand. It's Ken Harbaugh with the Midas Touch Network. The film Against All Enemies, which I co-produced with Ben Micellis and this network, has won awards around the world for its up-close portrayal of America's insurrectionist movement. It premieres in the U.S. on March 29th on Amazon and Apple TV. Go to AgainstAllEnemiesFilm.com or click the link below. But don't just watch Against All Enemies. Tell your friends about it. It's one more way to hold accountable those who threaten our democracy. Thanks, Midas Mighty. Let's use our power well.